Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll explore the Greeks, particularly the first order Greeks. Key measures that show how an option's price reacts as market changes. Like we know now, options are dynamic instruments and their value depends not just on the underlying price, but also on time, volatility and other factors. The Greeks measure these sensitivities. Among the many Greeks, we often focus on the first order ones. They measure how an option's price responds to the most immediate market changes. Delta measures how much the option's price changes when the underlying asset's price moves. Theta measures how much the option loses in value over time, in other words, time decay. Vega is the relationship between the option's price and the fluctuation in implied volatility. And Rho is basically how the option is going to fluctuate uh, with a change in interest rates. Even though Rho is still important, uh, it falls outside of the scope of this course. Uh, so we'll just dive deeper into Delta, Theta, and Vega, explaining how they work and why they matter. So let's begin with Delta. Like we know now, options are financial contracts that in part derive their value from an underlying asset. One of the main ways we measure this relationship is with Delta, which indicates how much an option's price is expected to move if the underlying price changes by $1. For call options, Delta ranges from 0 to 1. For example, a call option with a delta of 0.6 would typically gain about 60 cents if the underlying asset's price rises by $1. For put options, delta ranges from negative 1 to 0. This negative delta shows that the put option's value increases when the underlying asset's price decreases. A call's delta can go above plus 1 and a put's delta can go below negative 1. Why? Because the option's price depends on the underlying asset, but it's simply an option can't move more per dollar than the underlying does. So delta stays with a negative one and plus one, capturing only part of the underlying's price movement. When we compare an option's value to changes in underlying price, the relationship isn't perfectly linear. For a call option, the price grows slowly when the contract is far out of the money. It speeds up as it gets closer at the money, and then once it's deep in the money, the option price often moves almost in tandem with the underlying which explains why its delta approaches 1. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. A put option shows a mirror pattern, starting near negative 1 delta when in the money, slowing down around at the money and then dropping off even more once it's out of the money. A useful way to interpret delta is as the approximate probability that an option will end in the money at expiration. When an option is at the money, meaning its strike price is very close to the current market price of the underlying, its delta often hovers around 0.5. This 0.5 delta reflects a 50% chance that the contract lands in the money at expiration. For an at the money call option, the underlying will need to move up beyond the strike price for the call to end in the money. For an add the money put option, the underlying will need to move down below the strike price for the put to end in the money. Since delta offers a snapshot of how the options price might react to price changes in the underlying, it is crucial for structuring trades and estimating potential profits or losses. Options aren't influenced only by the movement in underlying price. They also experience time decay each day as expiration approaches. This is known as time decay, and it's captured by the Greek theta. Theta measures how much value an option loses on over a single session, assuming everything else stays the same. Because options have a fixed expiration, less time means fewer chances of a favorable move in the underlying asset. In that case, the extrinsic time value diminishes over time. Theta is typically negative, showing that time works against the option holder. For example, a theta of negative 0.5 means we can expect the option to lose about 50 cents each day if nothing else changes. Think of an option like a melting ice cube. It gradually loses mass every day regardless of other factors. Time decay is not the same across all moneyness. Because most of their worth is intrinsic value, deep in the money options tend to have less sensitivity to time decay. At the money options have the largest amount of extrinsic value and therefore lose the value the fastest. Because their strike is very close to the current underlying price, 
there's a significant uncertainty whether they'll finish in the money or out of the money. As time runs out, that uncertainty and extrinsic value quickly fades away. The decay of out of the money options is slower than at the money since they have less extrinsic value, but they can quickly collapse towards zero if the underlying never moves favorably before the expiration. So to conclude, Theta impacts options the most when they're at the money. Deep in the money and far out of the money contracts lose value more gradually, but they're still subject to time decay, especially as expiration draws near. Now that we've covered Delta and Theta, which focus on price and time, now we're going to focus on Vega, which measures how changes in implied volatility affect an option's value. Implied vol reflects the market's view on how much the underlying might move as inferred from the option's price. Vega is generally always positive, whether it's a call or a put. If IV increases, it implies a greater range of possible outcomes, boosting the option's price, since there's a higher chance it might finish in the money. When IV goes down, the options price decreases. So, assuming everything else is unchanged, if an option has a Vega of 0.1 and implied vol increases by 1%, you can expect the options price to rise about 10 cents. If you plot an options price against implied volatility, you get a rising curve. Higher IV means higher options prices. Vega is the slope, or the first derivative of that curve, showing how steeply price responds to volatility changes. Add the money options have the highest vega because they contain the most extrinsic value. Any change in IV will drastically affect their probability of expiring in the money. Out of the money options have lower vega as their chance of ending in the money is already pretty low. Changes in IV affect them less. In the money options also have a lower vega compared to add the money though they still have some form of extrinsic value. This distribution of Vega across different strike prices tends to form a bell shape, peaking at at the money strike. All right, let's wrap it up. First order Greeks, Delta, Theta, and Vega are the foundations of understanding how option prices respond to market movements, time decay, and volatility changes. Delta shows how closely an option premium follows the underlying asset's price, Theta illustrates how time decay chips away at an option's value, and Vega reveals how sensitive an option is to shifts in implied volatility. Mastering these concepts lets you manage option positions with greater precision and confidence, laying a solid foundation for advanced trading techniques.